There's another paradox, too. I mean, I think we're missing out on this opportunity for for Clinton to make a broad ideological argument, tie Trump in as the instead of like a an aberration for the uh, for the um, uh, aberration for the uh, Republican Party. He is indicative of the Republican Party. Instead of making that argument, she's um, she's she's saying he's, you know, uh, uh, sui generis, as they say. Uh, and. Um, but simultaneously, not just what's happening in the States, she gives a speech yesterday, which is, you know, if you had told me that she is going to hit these points at in August of the general election, I wouldn't, you know, uh, uh, two years ago, let's say, OK, before I knew that Bernie Sanders was existed, you know, as a candidate, yep. before I knew that Donald Trump was going to be a candidate. If you were to tell me that Hillary Clinton would go out there, be forceful and specific. I mean, let's listen to just uh, forceful and specific on yep. debt free college for I mean, free college, free college for people uh, who are of, uh, you know, one hundred twenty five thousand households, one hundred twenty five thousand dollars and lower, um, you know, coming out for. Uh, raising the minimum wage, all the parental leave and, 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 and whatnot, but coming out forcefully against the TPP. And, and I didn't know anything else. I would have been like, Cliff, do you, you know what? You got to get yourself, you got to check yourself into a hospital right now because you're insane. That's <laughs> crazy. And listen to what she said about the, uh, the TPP uh, yesterday. This is her uh, speech in Detroit. It was a long litany of, you know, Pretty people can say, like, I don't believe she's going to do any of this. All right, well, good enough. But I'm saying in terms of rhetorical, this is a long list of very progressive um, policies she's laying out there. So we have a non-ideological campaign where she is trying to she's not holding the Republicans responsible for uh, for for Donald Trump. But on a day to day level. There's no grand ideological scheme here, but the policy set are pretty mm-hmm. progressive. It's 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 fascinating. I don't. I, I just. It, it's it's fascinating to me. Here she is we'll on the TPP. I'll have a comment after that. All right. I, here's I the TPP uh, segment right now. The answer is to finally make trade work for us, not against us. So my message, my message to every worker in Michigan and across America is this: I will stop any trade deal that kills jobs or holds down wages, including the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I oppose it now, I'll oppose it after the election, and I'll oppose it as president. And so, I mean, the after the election refers to the lame duck. And then in response today, um, the Obama administration, basically as part of the fast track authority, um, mm-hmm. put Congress on notice that it's going to be sending lawmakers a bill to imp- uh, to implement the TPP. That is a the, it's a submission of the draft of statement of administrative administration action, which establishes the 30 day minimum. So that's part of the the fast track. We give you notice. It's a 30 day minimum that we give you notice that we're going to try and put this through. They're going to aim, obviously, for the lame duck session. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Clinton responds to this. It's going to be interesting to see what happens now. Um, yeah. and, and I don't think she's going to get in a big fight with the president of her own party who's supporting her. That's the thing. I mean, we'll have to see what she does. But she can stand up and say in generic terms that she'll oppose it without, like, showing up to man the barricades. You know what I mean? Right. And um, the question and, is... that may affect certain congressional... The, obviously, yes. that gives cover to certain members of Congress to, to oppose it. There are um, 28 House Democrats who supported Fast Track. And for the, um, for the House to pass this, um, Ryan is going to need those 28. And when Clinton comes out and says she's against it, Right, it sort of like unshackles them to vote against the president. Now that's I'm... the key thing. There. So that's the key thing, first of all. But second of all, and, and you know, this is again an argument I've been making for a while, and I think this is based on history, at least my understanding of it, which is um, there have been a lot of Democratic presidents, and we don't always know what their true feelings are. You know what I mean? I mean. If, you know, sometimes they evolve in different directions. You could say they devolve. It really depends what you think. 
but it's always the culture out there surrounding them where the where the strength is on various issues and movements overall in the party that determines really what happened. They can read polls, you know what I mean? And and that's why I've always kind of my point about Hillary Clinton has always been there are a lot of people who said she was the, the person, you know, people I know that worked in the Clinton administration, progressives who said she was to the left on most of the issues. There are other people who certainly in the years since have said she's moved a lot to the right. The thing is, is that is that if she's up there saying these things now, she's realizing, A, she needs to do this to keep her coalition together. But right. B, most of these things are very popular even beyond the Democratic Party. She gets it in a way that Obama didn't and maybe shouldn't have as much because, look, there wasn't a movement against against other tra- you know, trade in the past the way there is against TPP. There wasn't a movement you know, demanding overtime and, and a, a minimum wage increase. There was, but not with the strength it has now, we're increasing Social Security or any number of issues. The, I mean, you know, we've seen what's happened. The DLC is dead, right? They've all gone over, and I guess they've, got, they've changed their resumes to third way, but it's, they used to have multiple of these sort of centrist organizations, and most of them are gone. Yep. And most of their senators are gone, too. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast, like us on Facebook, and just generally enjoy us.